Hi everyone, and welcome back to the series How Firebase Projects Work. In this episode, I'm going to cover environments and emulators. In the first episode of the series, we covered how to set up your Firebase project and your Firebase apps and the best practices recommended by the Firebase team. Now, we are going to deep dive into one of the scenarios where it can be useful to use multiple Firebase projects, which is to support different environments. For production apps, you need to set up a clear development workflow or deployment pipeline, which usually involves setting up and managing multiple environments. An environment consists of all the hardware and software that are required to run an instance of an application or system of applications. It's often necessary to create different environments for different purposes. For example, for security reasons, you will probably want to create a different user base and database for each environment. You might also want to create different environments so as not to exceed the API trotting limits for some services or not to exceed the different quotas for each service. And if you're using Google Analytics, another good reason to have different environments is to make sure that your Google Analytics data is pristine and only accounts for events occurring in your production environment and not events generated by any tasks you've performed in your testing environment. So let's take a look at some types of environments. First, let's talk about the development environment. This is where developers will write the code to create new features, improve existing code, and fix any existing bugs. It should be a safe, isolated place to test changes as they're being built. Because of that, the data in the dev environment can be almost anything. Over time, you will probably accumulate things like artifacts from past bugs you have fixed, images that were used for testing or that needed to be resized, a username with emojis in it, and product logs filled with fake data to force pagination bugs you once investigated. It can be handy for each developer working on an app to have a separate dev environment in order to avoid overriding each other's work. And to iterate faster during development, it is very useful for each one of these developers to have a local instance of their dev environment. We will talk about the tools that Firebase offers to speed up development in different environments later in this video. Once you have finished developing a version of your application, you definitely want to test it in a testing environment. This environment should replicate as closely as possible the same execution environment that will be exposed to users in production so that tests accurately reflect the real end user experience. Like with all non-prod environments, it's very important to keep the data and user accounts for your test environment separated from what's used in your production app. And if you have QE engineers, they may need one environment that they all use, or they may need individual environments to test a new release candidate. Once you're confident in your new version, you will probably want to share it more broadly for review before releasing it to your users, maybe with your product manager, for example but you still need to do this final review in a controlled environment, your staging environment. This environment should simulate production infrastructure as much as possible, and its data should be realistic but still be fake. And finally, your new version is ready to go to the final environment, production. This is the environment where your app can be used by the end user. And this is the environment where you need to be very careful when you're touching data or making other changes, because losing or altering your production data will directly affect your users. And these are the most common environments, dev, test, staging, and prod. So if your software development workflow includes different environments as well, you can configure different Firebase projects for each one of them. After all, we just covered how important it is to isolate the data used in each stage of the deployment pipeline. Now, let's see how you can have different environments when using Firebase. The first thing that you need to do is set up different Firebase projects for your different environments. You can do this in the Firebase console or in a variety of programmatic ways. If you choose to do it using the Firebase console, you need to create a new Firebase project for each environment as you can see here on this dashboard. The Firebase team recommends tagging the Firebase project associated with your production environment as a production environment type in the Firebase console. This tag will help remind you and your teammates that any changes in this specific Firebase project could affect your associated production apps and their data. To change the environment type of your Firebase project, go to your project settings, open the general tab, then click Edit to change the environment type under the environment configuration. The next thing you need to do in each of your Firebase projects is register the release status variants of your app with the appropriate Firebase project. This means that you need to register all your debug builds, iOS, Android, and web 
with one of your non-production projects and register all your release builds, again, iOS, Android, and web, with your production project. Once you have created the different Firebase projects and registered your apps, you'll need to configure your code base to know when and how to access these different Firebase projects. And there are different ways you can configure your code base to do this, depending on whether it's an Android, iOS, or web app. You can learn how to do it for each platform in the official documentation. To give an example of when your code base would need to access different Firebase projects, it's when it's interacting with a database. If you're testing the new version of your app, your code needs to access the database of your test Firebase project. But once the version has been released, your code needs to switch over to access the database of your well-protected prod Firebase project. Oh, and speaking of well-protected, don't forget to make sure that you have Firebase security rules set up in node environments, even the pre-production ones. In general, security rules should be the same across all the environments. Now you may be wondering, do I really need to create different Firebase projects for every new environment? Or is there any way I could do it locally, especially when I'm quickly iterating during development? In fact, there is, the Firebase Local Emulator Suite. The Firebase Local Emulator Suite is a set of tools for developers who want to use Firebase in their app and test locally. It contains individual product emulators built to mimic the behavior of Firebase services. Each one of them responds to SDK and REST API calls just like real Firebase services, so you can connect your app directly to these emulators to run your tasks without deploying real resources or touching real data. The Local Emulator Suite is a good fit for your development and testing environments especially if you're iterating on your backend database, cloud storage, authentication, etc. You can also emulate admin SDK functionality, and you can even try out a Firebase extension without actually deploying it to your project. In addition to local development, the emulator suite can also plug into your CI CD pipelines used for testing and staging. One more thing, we are regularly adding emulator support for more Firebase products and features. So check out the local emulator suite docs for the most up-to-date listing. Beyond all the services available in our emulator suite, there are also other tools that help you in the prototyping and testing phases, such as cloud function testing tools and security rules testing tools. The link to these resources is available in the description. One piece of the local emulator suite that makes rapid iteration easier is the Firebase emulator UI. This is a visual tool that allows you to use the product emulators in a similar way that you could use the Firebase console during development, like seeing if a new database structure or access scheme is behaving as expected. The official documentation teaches how to configure both the emulator suite and the emulator UI locally. There's also this code lab that has the step-by-step -step of how to start with local development with the Firebase emulator suite and an amazing video called the Local Firebase Emulator UI in 15 minutes that answers many questions you might have regarding the Firebase emulator UI. All links covered in this video are available below in the video description. And that's all for today. Next in the series, we are going to talk about the different billing plans. Thank you all for staying with me until the end of the video and see you soon.